For as long as humans have been on this earth, they have been victims of procrastination. It's gotten so bad that it just continues to become a bigger and bigger problem in society. 25% of adults consider procrastination to be a defining personality trait for themselves. 89.5% of college students engage in procrastination to some degree. Approximately 70% of college students consider themselves the procrastinators, and approximately 50% of students say they procrastinate consistently and problematically. And we all know the joke about procrastination and how some of us procrastinate like a pro. But procrastination can affect us in a lot of ways. It can lead to ineffective coping mechanisms, greater perceived stress, the absence of essential judgment behaviors, just to name a few. But why do we do this and how can we stop? Why must we continue to put off calling our doctor or exercising and replace that with online shopping or Netflix? And that's what I'm gonna talk about in this video. I wanna talk about a few things that you can do that'll help you stop procrastinating and hopefully be a little more effective with your time. One. Evaluate your time. So a lot of people say they don't have time for whatever they're trying to make time for. And I'm sure there genuinely are some people out there that cannot make time because they have way too many responsibilities. Maybe they have kids, maybe they're a single parent, whatever the case may be. But I feel like a lot of people get sucked down this vortex, vortex and end up wasting way more hours, seconds, days, however you want to phrase it, than necessary. And they don't even realize it. I don't have time usually equivalates to four hours of Netflix, three hours of scrolling through social media, sleeping until noon, and going out partying on the weekends. But I don't have time. So I will do this task tomorrow. So if this sounds like you, I think one of the best things that you can do is actually log your time and find out where exactly it's going. I think doing it minute by minute is a little bit overkill. What I think is very beneficial is tracking it hour by hour and find out where each hour of your day is going exactly. And make sure to physically write it down so you know and can physically see it. So for example, if you watch Netflix for two hours, go and write down Netflix from 12 to two. And say you spent an hour on social media, write down Instagram from two to three. And continue to do this with everything you spend your time on throughout the day and do that for a week. But doing this for a week, you're going to be able to see what exactly you can cut out of your schedule. If you want to start exercising, but you didn't have the time before, you could cut out an hour of Netflix and spend that time running or at the gym. I am fitness. And when that week is up, the majority of you are most likely going to be shocked at how much time you're wasting on things that just aren't that important to you. Two, let the first version suck. This one goes out to all the perfectionists out there. A lot of people struggle to finish tasks because they need them to be 100% perfect. I know some creators out there I follow have a very hard time of posting content because they want that content, that piece they created to just be 100% perfect and it just leads them to not post anything. Here's some news for you. Nothing is going to be perfect, especially your first version. So let it suck. I don't know if there's a single YouTube video, a single novel out there that was done on the first try, done after the first draft at all. So just let it suck. The hardest part to some of these things we want to accomplish and achieve is starting. We constantly think that whatever we are going to work on isn't going to be good enough, and we compare ourselves to others about where they are 10 years on their journey while we are only on day one, rather than comparing ourselves to who we were or where we were yesterday. Remember, once you get something down on paper, it's much, much, much easier to go back and edit it or change something a little bit later on. I've heard a number of stories where people are writing novels and they just want to write down 200 words a day. They don't care if it's good, they don't care if it's bad, they just want to write down 200 words a day. Joe Rogan's also someone that does this with his comedy bits. <laughs> the Joe Rogan experience. He says he tries to write, I think, a page every single day. And a lot of the times he'll write that page and he won't use anything from that page from his bits. But he said in that page, there might be one line or one sentence that's really, really good. And he can start to build off of that. In other words, you got to go through the bad to get to the good. Three, self-sabotage. This might mean stopping in the middle of a run if you're training for a marathon, even though you definitely had more in the tank or just giving up and deleting the document in which you were typing the first chapter of your book. Ending with the result of you looking in the mirror and saying, I knew I couldn't do it. And I think there are a couple of ways you could combat this. I believe that first, you can just focus on how far you have come. If you started training for a marathon and you started after not running for two years, and after a month of training, you can run seven miles, don't think about, I am never going to be able to run another almost 20 miles on top of that. Think about, wow, about a month ago, I couldn't run a single mile. Now I can run seven. And the second way is to focus on your work. Bring 
focus on the present moment. Again, don't think about tacking on another 20 miles onto your seven mile run. Think about how you're going to train so you can run 10 miles, then 12, and eventually you will get there. Lastly, stop overwhelming yourself. A lot of people, when they write to-do lists, they write down a large number of tasks. It can be extremely daunting staring at a to-do list of 85 items in which you have no time frame to accomplish them. Instead of focusing on all 85 items and overwhelming yourself, focus on three or four of them you want to tackle today. I like to think of describing this one as similar to debt. If you take out a mortgage on your house, you're most likely not going to pay that back immediately. And it shouldn't be that way with your to-do list either. Don't focus on getting all 85 tasks done at one time, but focus on one at a time. Focus on getting three to four of those tasks done every single day or whatever you can handle and go from there. And just like a mortgage, eventually it'll be paid off. Overall, if we stop procrastinating, we will have more time to do things we care about. We will have more time to work on ourselves, spend time with our families, and do whatever we please. And personally, I feel like as humans, we will feel much more fulfilled because in my opinion, setting a goal and achieving it is much more satisfying than bragging about what show you've been watching on Netflix.